Hello and welcome to our uh, today's um, yeah, training uh, in the series RFM6 for students. Today we will have the introduction to the concrete design. Um, before we start, let me introduce myself to you. Um, my name is Juliane Stoppakta. Um, I'm working in the global team for now around about four years and i'm on the one hand working for customer support so customers can call us or email us um, with questions regarding our program or their models and we uh, support them then we will we try to find solutions for them and also we give trainings um, and on the other hand, I'm working for the developer teams. Um, I'm supporting the developers of the add-ons um, reinforced concrete design and um, geotechnical analysis. Yeah, and uh, with the development team, we always work on improvements for the program. Yes, and I today will hold this training for you. I will give the presentation to you. And we are not alone. We have my colleague Richard Hase with us, who's supporting us in the with the questions in the chat. Um, you can ask questions and how this can be done. I will show you with the next slide. And I will uh, also close my camera um, so that you can see the um, PowerPoint full screen. So this is the, yeah, control panel um, that you can see and there's this setting here this option here to go to audio settings if you have problems with the uh, mic with the headphones or something you can adjust um, your audio settings in here and with this button here with the little question mark you can open this window where you can enter your questions. Um, these questions will go to Richard, to my colleague, and then he can reply to you. And don't worry, um, if there are questions open at the end of this training, um, we will reply them uh, with emails. You will get an email afterwards. Uh, no question will stay open. We will reply to all of them. And uh, this training is going to be recorded. Uh, you will also receive this record after the training. Uh, you will get an email with the link for downloading it. And yeah, there you can um, watch this video again and you can follow the training again if you want to repeat some stuff. Yes, okay. Then I think that's enough now for preparation. We can go to content. This is the plan for our training today. We will at the beginning have a look at an introduction, introductionary example, a concrete beam. And uh, yeah, we will have, um, we will model the beam, we will um, put the loads on it. And um, yeah, then we also will have a look at the design properties. Uh, that we need for concrete design and we will do the finite element analysis for our system and also the concrete design in the same time and afterwards we will have a look at the results the results of the static analysis the finite element analysis and uh, also the concrete design um, after this example we will also have a look at a slab, a concrete slab, and we will do the design for it too. Yes, um, that will be it for today. Um, yes, and now we will go to the program. Okay, um, we have here our RFM6 and we will open a new model, which we can do here. We have here this button. button to open the next model and the first thing we do is we come to the base data where we can give it a name and this will be our concrete beam. This is the name and all the default setting in this register we will keep. 
Now we go to the next register, which is about the add-ons. Um, RFM6 is a finite element program. With that, you can do the finite element analysis for your model, and you will calculate inner forces, deformations, stresses, strains. If you want to do some additional analysis, you can add here the add-ons. And we today want to do the concrete design, therefore we have to switch it on in here. With this uh, action, with switching it on, um, the main program will be enlarged. It will get the uh, options for giving the input. Um, it will get the analysis and the results for the add-on you activate in here. So it will be added directly into the main program. And what we need to do for Concrete Design 2 is we have to go to the standards uh, as we have to tell the program according to which standard the design shall be done. So we have here now the Eurocode and the National Annex Zen. We keep these settings and we agree. And now our model is prepared. Uh, the file for it is prepared. It is empty. Um, I will open this here more so that we can see it more big. Um, I want to uh, show you the files in RFM6. They always provide, provide some default um, options. Um, the program keeps in mind which materials, which sections you did use the last time. Um, it can help for a new project, um, but for us now we want to start from scratch. Therefore I delete all these um, uh, objects so that we can start uh, in a fresh file. So what we do now is we go to the materials and here we create a new material and we therefore provide here the library. Um, we can go into here and we want to select our concrete and it is important that you take care of that the standard according to uh, which you want to do de the design that you should um, select a material according to that standard. So we have C3037. I um, accept that and I go on apply. Then I can see also here on the navigator that it is added. Um, and I want to have another material. I also need the reinforcing steel. And I want to show you another way of giving the input. You also, if you do know the name, you can also directly enter here the name of the material and then take it from here. And I want to take this one and it does the same actually. It, you give the name and then it takes the input from the library, but it can be faster if you know the names. Okay, now we have the materials assigned and you can see that it is written in blue letters here. This means that mm, these objects are prepared in that model, but they are not in use. Um, we will later see that if there are objects used in the model, then uh, the letters will be black. So it's a good way. Um, it makes it easier to control to see if you missed the assignment somewhere. Okay, then we can go to the sections. We want to create the section for our beam. Um, and this is the dialogue for it. We have as, uh, equal to the materials, we also have for sections a library. You can enter here and here you can see a lot of different sections we provide in RFM. But I want to cancel this, I want to show you here on the right side, we also have uh, a list of common cross sections that are used. Um, the program automatically um, adds here the first material of the list. It fits for us. We want to have a section with a concrete material, and uh, for this for this material, uh, it proposes these cross sections, and we want to do use the rectangular. So it's fine for us. We can go to the next register where we can enter the geometry for our section. And uh, we will have 300 
in this direction and 458 and I can say OK and then I have my cross section prepared and you can see it uses the concrete so this became black here and now we can directly model our beam. We have therefore here this menu, this button uh, to create a new single member. I click on this and I create a member and I can also check here the section. Yes, this is the section I did define and now I can start and I have the grid points here. So I want to start in zero and our member shall be eight meters long. And with the grid here, it's quite easy to find the eight meters. I click on the grid point and my beam is defined. Now I want to add a node in here, in between in the member. And um, we have a special type of node we can find, for example, if we do a double click on the member, we come back to the member menu. And here we can use the option to define a node on member or more than one, but we only need one. Uh, and as I activate this option here, this register comes. You can see it's not here, now it comes. And I can enter the position of the node, but I want to not give the data in percent. So I click here and now I can give it in meters and I want it to be placed six meters from start. And I go on OK. And now you can see that here I have a additional node. Okay, now we have the beam. What we need now and what we do now is we define the support. Therefore, I select the member start. I do click double on the node and I'm in the nodes register and here I have the option to assign a support. And again, uh, the special register for that option opens up and here I can create a new nodal support for this node. And I want to have a fully um, fixed support and I go on OK and then this node is supported. We can see here the green thing. And I want to have another support here at this inner node. Um, and I go here on support again and create new support. And I want to have now a sliding support. I use that one, which is sliding in X direction. And I also want this to be fixed, the rotation about X axis. Okay, I go on OK. With this uh, node on member, um, we have the option that there is a node at that member, but this node doesn't divide this member into two parts. This is quite helpful if you want to do the concrete design for it and the reinforcement um, will work as for one member. Okay, now we have our beam ready. What we now do need is the loads. So therefore we can go now here a bit more down in the menu and I do a right click on load cases and combinations and we see the dialog here and we have here the load cases. Um, what the program provides um, as standard is a self-weight load case. Um, we have here the self-weight active <coughs> and now we add a further load case. And I want to have a dead load load case. It's also from action category permanent. I go on apply and I create a new load case and this will be a live load and I you select this action category. It is important to uh, select the proper action category as the action category decides how this load case is considered in the design situation in the load combinations. Um, so this is my live load. And I say live load one, <clears throat> you will see later why. And I copy this load case and I create here live load two. Okay, so then I go and apply again, then it is in the model. Now we can go to the next registers and 
have a look at them. Here we see a list of all the action categories we have in the model. An overview. Then we can go to the design situations and um, these are the design situations that are used for the different design checks. Um, and you can always for all of these um, click here on this info button and there you get the info about the combination rule um, which is used for creating the load combinations. Um, yeah, so it can be followed and um, we have here the frequent design situation. Um, you can see that all of them are now used in the concrete design. And I can also here deactivate it and say this design situation I don't want to have considered in the concrete design as I don't need it right now. Um, then we can go to the next and here we see how all the action categories we have in our model are combined. And then we can have a look at the load combinations. This is the list of all load combinations that are automatically generated for us as we have here the combination wizard assigned. Um, if you switch it off, you can manually define combinations for this design situation if you have it active as we saw the load combinations are generated. I go on OK and all my load combinations, they are prepared. Now we have to fill these load cases that we have prepared with loads. Um, therefore, we look at here, we have now for every load case here a different folder and we now go to the dead load. And I want to define the member load and I use this button here, new member load. I go on here and I start with the dead load. Um, and I can select the member and I want to have 1.5 kilonewton per meter assigned and in Z direction this is fine all these settings can be kept and now we have this button here apply and next I want to use it because I can then stay in that um, dialog and we can have a look here at the background, the load was defined and now I can go to the next load case and define my next load. And it is still member number one for which I want to define the load. And now I want to use another load distribution. I'm using trapezoidal and I use 20 kN per meter at the end and at the start. And the load shall um, reach from uh, from the beginning up to six meter and again I go on apply and next now I can see that this load case it's the live load for the first spun um, is defined and now I can go to the second again member one and now I change it here it shall start from six meters and reach out till the end of the beam and I can now go on OK as it is fine for me to leave that dialog also. So now we can check them. Mm, we can go backwards. We have this live load, we have this live load, we have the dead load and we have the self-weight load case. It was the one with the self-weight active in the dialog and we can also see that if we go here on the navigator for display and here in the loads. In this navigator you can uh, control a lot of settings for the display in this main working window. And we can here activate the self-weight. And this is the self-weight that is automatically calculated for us uh, with the cross-section and the materials weight. Um, yeah, And here we can see what the program calculated. Uh, yeah. Then we can also see here our load combinations. The program shows us the factorized loads and um, yeah, we can have an overview about what is assigned in this load co combination. Okay, mm. now we are at a point in the modeling process where we could start the finite element analysis. We have a system a structure that has boundary conditions for geometry and for loads and 
the uh, finite element analysis could be started. But as we want to do the concrete design uh, as well, we will now have a look at the design properties for concrete design. Therefore, we go here to the member and we can see here uh, the design properties. This appears here as the program has the concrete design active and as soon as an object is of concrete then these properties are available and we could also switch them off then we would see the pure dialog for the member how it would look for the member and if we have it not active this member would not be part of the concrete design as it has no concrete design properties but we want it to be designed that's why we switch it on and then we can go through the concrete design registers so the first option is to define an effective length this effective length uh, is used for the stability design um, with the equivalent member method and as we now have the beam uh, which has no stability problem we don't need to use the equivalent member method and therefore we don't assign the effective length here we can go to concrete cover um, this we need um, we can give the concrete durability um, we have a default value here and we can with this button go on edit and we can have a look at it and here you have this helpful graphic um, and you could also change it if it is necessary or add further um, exposure, exposure classes and also set uh, additional op options if you need. But we will keep the standard settings and we will go on. Um, if we have the concrete durability de uh, yeah, defined, then a program can automatically calculate us the concrete cover according to the standard that we have selected for the design. But it is also possible to uh, give a user-defined concrete cover and it is also possible to define it different for the section sides. This can be needed if one part of a column, for example, is at the outside of the building and one part is at the inside or something like this. But we keep the default setting. Then we can come to the reinforcement. The first uh, register is for the shear reinforcement. And for both the reinforcement registers, we have here at the beginning the, the type of reinforcement that we can select and we have the stirrup type and we have now a two-legged stirrup but we also provide three-legged stirrups but we stay with two-legged and um, here's the material mm, the material is automatically the first reinforcement material you have in your material list is selected here it is assigned here uh, but you can also change it if you have further in your model. Um, then you can define the stirrup parameters and we want to use 8 millimeters, uh, 8 millimeters stirrups and uh, you can also define the distance for the stirrups and if you need you can also define further fields of stirrups. You can have different um, stirrup reinforcement area in different parts of the member but we keep now um, the setting that we have one field along the whole member. Okay, that's it for now. We keep it like this for the shear reinforcement. We can come to the uh, longitudinal reinforcement. Here it's uh, analogous. You also can select the rebar type in here and we have as default symmetrical here, but we want to use an unsymmetrical reinforcement. Mm, and as we know, we have in our beam mainly at the bottom side tension. We want to keep the stronger reinforcement for the bottom side, but for the top side we want to reduce it. We go on 14 millimeters. Yes, and um, again it also finds the reinforcement material and we can also see here the reinforcement area as information. Then you can check 
uh, whether it fits to the values you would like to have. And the same was available here also. You see also the area for the stirrups. Yeah, this is um, the reinforcement we want to use now in our example. I go and apply once in a while. And uh, then we can go to the next register here. We have configurations assigned and uh, we can go into the ultimate configuration. Mm, here you have selected all the settings that we provide according the design according to the selected standard. There are several options provided also in the standard and also in our program then and you can go through these points and select the uh, settings that fit for you. You can for example unselect the mm, detailing rules for the members if you wish to have a, a yeah, design that is led by the ultimate state mm, but you also can activate it, have it activated as it is here uh, if you wish to consider the minimum requirements of the standard and so on. We have here also the option to do the design for the shear joint, which we don't need here. Um, yeah. For the rest, we keep the default settings. And we have it similar for the serviceability uh, limit state. Here also you can select which checks you want to do. We have the limitation of steel stress active, but the concrete stress not yet active. You can activate it and you have the minimum reinforcement area um, uh, for crack uh, limitation. And we can also activate the limitation of deflection. Um, yeah, I will for now not consider this. Um, yes. Yeah, you can select here what you want to have in your design according to that standard. Then we can go here to the design supports. Um, design supports you also need um, for the program. Um, it is relevant for design checks. The program needs to know at which node the current member has a support and at which node it doesn't has. Therefore, we go here to the member start and we define a new design support. It shall be considered in the Z direction and it has that width and the support depth it takes from the member width. And we have a monolithic connection and there's no inner support at the member start. So we have this design support and we create another one which is an inner support. And we go on OK. And we have the first support here, which was the not inner support. <coughs> <coughs> and at the end of the member we don't have a support. We have a design support at the internal node and there we can assign now our second member support. We can see here now, now the program knows our member is supported here and here for the design checks. We go on OK and then we have it in our model. OK, mm, I think then we are ready, yes. We are ready. We can start our calculation and I want to start it from here. We have here the table and we have all these objects that we saw here, um, all the objects that we did define. We also have uh, in the table and we can have a, uh, the view of the table too. Yeah, sometimes it's useful to work with the table too. And here we can find the concrete design as well. Um, here you see the uh, design situations that are now considered in the design. And here also you can switch them off if you say you don't want them now. And you can select the objects that shall be designed. And from here you can start the concrete design. I will click on it. And now the program starts with the mesh. And afterwards, the finite element analysis is started. The inner forces, the um, deformations, stresses and strains are calculated. And then 
as we have them, the concrete design is done with these inner forces. And now we see the result. Yes, um, what we do see now at first is um, here the overview for the concrete design. Um, maybe I start here. We have here the navigator for results and we are now on the concrete design. But it's always possible to go back on the static analysis. Here you fi can find the results of the finite element analysis. And um, yeah, you can check, for example, the deformations, whether they are plausible. Mm, let's have a look at them. Uh, we can go on the um, wireframe model. And I want to switch off the reinforcement. I don't want to see it now, as I want to focus on our results. Now we can see more clear the deformation and we can also um, select here that we want to have the section colored, but we can also go back to lines. So um, as we see, we can go to static analysis um, and these results from the static analysis, the inner forces, they are used for the design. And um, what we have here is um, the overview. It looks relatively red because you are warned in that overview uh, according the positions where you have to work on. Um, but you can also go here on design ratios on members and I will show it. It is a lot, relatively a lot. And you can also deselect options here. We have now here the ultimate limit state results the serviceability limit state results, and also detailing checks. And with these buttons, we can select what shall be shown in the table. And I don't want to see now the constructive rules, the detailing, and I don't for now want to see the serviceability limit state. I want to work on the ultimate limit state now. And we can see that we have here a value reached. Um, the, the safety is not provided in that ultimate limit state. Mm, and this is our um, section resistance check. And mm, yeah, I guess it is caused by this um, support, by the moment we have here from support. And um, we can have a look. Here we can see the design check. This is only the UL100. And we can see that we here don't fulfill the check, but we can also have a look on the reinforcement. So I switch off the design check and go to the reinforcement. And here we can see the required longitudinal reinforcement at the top and at the bottom. And we can also have a look at the provided reinforcement at the top and at the bottom. And there we can see that our problem is the top side. So it's really the support, the moment from the support. Uh, we have tension on the top side and for this tension our reinforcement is not enough. You can check it like this, if you look like this. But you can also directly go to the result not covered reinforcement. Therefore I switch off the required and the provided and we just open this one. And there we can see that in this range um, the reinforcement is not enough. And yeah, now we will um, modify our reinforcement in order to fulfill this check. So therefore we can go here directly. I did do a double click on the member and I get back to the members dialog. And I saw that I need 4.8 uh, centimeter square. So we have 4.6. Um, So I want to use, I create, I copy this reinforcement item, but I only need additional reinforcement at the top side. So I set this value at the bottom side on zero. And this is not enough. Therefore, I go on four. Um, and I have it now in my member. And what I see is that now this item is placed along the whole length. This I don't want, I don't need. We saw it's a very limited zone. So I can here define the span location. 
and I want to do it absolute and I want to start from zero this is good but I want to go only to 2.5 meter and there we can see now here it is only in here this is what I want and I can see that it's in the same layer of reinforcement and I want to use an offset. This I can do here too. I go on offset from stirrup and I go from top side 30 and now I see it's better. And yeah, this um, reinforcement I want to use now. Um, Sorry, I want to go back to dialog. One thing I wanted to show. If we are in the re reinforcement register, we can also click on this here. Here we can see the reinforcement layout. And um, yeah, this is a good overview about all the reinforcement positions you have in your member. And this one you can also print. And um, you can also, also use this as a template and uh, do multi-print for this setting, then you can print a lot of members with one click with the same layout style. Yeah, okay, but this is enough for now. We go on OK and we do start our design again. As we saw, static analysis results were not deleted, they were still valid. Only the design is redone. And we are now in the not covered reinforcement. We are still there. And we can see now that these values are zero now. So on the top side and also on the bottom side, there is no not covered reinforcement, which is good for us. We can also go here on ratios on members and we see the ultimate limit state is fulfilled now. Um, I want to have a look also shortly on the um, shear check. Um, the shear resistance is checked in this second check in the UL200 and we can have a look on it here. Then we have it along the beam and we can see that it is fulfilled quite well. We can also have a look here. This is the ratio for the um, shear force uh, with the shear resistance without reinforcement and we can see it would be fulfilled here and then we have also this check and this check here um, and there we see finally the total check is fulfilled for um, shear resistance. What I want to show now is that you always have the option to see more details of the design check. You can do a double click on the design check and then you can see what is done in that check. Um, we don't provide a black box, we uh, fully document how the design check is done. So here now we are in the design check details. For that check we had a click on. So we are in the 200 for member 1 at location 0 and you also can switch through it uh, to further x locations. And here on the right side you can see all the formulas that are calculated now within the design. And you can switch off the values, then you have an overview about the formulas and you have here also uh, the reference to the standard. So you can quite well, quite detailed follow the design check and also see it with the values you have and it is quite useful to uh, check if there's a problem in the design check. If it is not fulfilled you can sh see uh, w which value is leading, where should you work on. Yeah, so these are our design check details. Um, you can also use this button here. It's helpful too. There you can see the stress state of the current members um, location and we can see now here at this location we have tension on the top side and compression on the bottom side. And you can also check dimensions here, different settings and you also can print this. Mm. And then you also can come here to that um, result diagram. Here with this design check details you are at one location in the member. Now if you open this one 
you can see the current design check along the whole member. And you can see how it behaves through the member, how it develops. Yeah. So, and this one you could also print and you could, you can here now um, add something, some information you want to know. You can check and you can print it from here to the printout report. You can directly print it, whatever you need. Yes, mm, this is it for here. Mm, let me check whether there's something else I would like to show. Mm, no, that's it. Mm, we have here also the interaction diagram. This as a very short note. You can also check the state your uh, cross section is in here, yeah, in detail. Um, yes, but for now, it's enough for the member. I think we are ready. We finished our introductionary uh, model. Mm, then we can come to our um, slab. And for this, I want to go back to the slide. Um, I have a short overview about the slab we want to work with. It's a reinforced concrete slab, which is uh, 24 centimeters thick and uses a C3037. And uh, it uh, is supported by walls and columns. And we also have here these L beams. Mm, and we have loads in the model. We have self weight and life load. And now we open the model for us. Um, we have it here. Uh, for this model, uh, I have the structure prepared um, in order to save some time and uh, spend the time with the uh, concrete design. So as we can see here, we have the concrete slab. Um, we have our materials in the list and mm, we have sections and I want to go to the section. These are this, this is the section for these L beams and we can have a double click here. For this type of beams, mm, we have in our firm a special member type which is called rib. If we go into here, we can see that we have now the member type rib used. Uh, before we had the beam as it was a single beam, but here it is a rib. This means we have the, um, the working together, let's say, of that member and the slab, which is uh, within the uh, effective width of the member. And here we have the special register for the rib. And here you can do some further settings. You can select whether your rib is placed at the uh, bottom side of the surface or top or at the center. Um, you can use the auto detection. There the program finds for you the surfaces um, that are placed at the rib. It can from time to time be needed to use the manual definition, then you can unselect the auto detection and so on. Um, yeah, and here you can do settings for the um, flange dimensions. Um, and here you have the overview. Yeah, like this. It has um, here the design properties provided as it is from concrete material, but uh, I don't want to do the design for the rib right now. We want to focus on the slab. Um, so we have the section here and the rib members here. What we do have in that model too is the thickness. The thickness is um, analogously to the section for members. We have the thickness for surfaces that we can define here. We can go into the dialog. Yeah, and here we can see the thickness and the material assigned. And it is assigned to the surface number one. And if we now we can also see our surface here. If we go on that surface, we can see the surfaces dialog. And um, 
Yeah, here we have the thicknesses side and we can also see the material and therefore we again have design properties active here. And yeah, as we are already here, we can go through it. Uh, I can show this would be the dialog without design properties and these are the additional concrete design settings. And we have here the concrete durability again uh, that can be defined and the automatic calculation of the uh, concrete cover and it can be user defined here too. Okay, um, then we can go to concrete design properties. Here we can select which direction of the local axis of the surface shall be the first reinforcement direction. And then we can come to the reinforcement. Here we can define the surface reinforcement and I can go on this button here and define a new uh, surface reinforcement. We have here the type on surface, which means that this reinforcement is placed um, along uh, on the whole surface area. And we want to use the 10 uh, diameter as diameter and the rebar spacing of 15 centimeter and we want the same in the transverse direction and here you have the uh, surface reinforcement area um, values. This reinforcement is placed at top side and bottom side. Um, yeah, and we can go on OK. And then we have it assigned. Okay, and we have here uh, design configurations too. Um, yeah, and here you can go through again and select the options you need in your model. And here we have a deflection register that we don't use right now. Um, yeah, then our surface is prepared also with the design properties. Now I want to show you something special we have. Um, we saw in our graphic that this slab is um, supported by uh, walls and columns. It is placed on them. Um, but as we are interested in the slab only, we don't want to analyze these walls and these columns. And but we want to consider the stiffness and what we have in this case uh, or, and what simplifies the model is we have special supports. And uh, we have here line support, for example, I can do a double click on the line support, then I get into it. And this line support uses the option stiffness via fictitious wall and this has this special register here and here we can see that we can set uh, the parameters of the wall and then the program automatically calculates for you the su su for, uh, support springs, the equivalent support springs due to this uh, wall. Uh, so you have the stiffness considered but there's no further analysis along uh, in all finite elements of the wall because we don't need it in this example. So we have the stiffness is assigned and um, the wall with its stiffness is considered as support. We have the same for nodal supports, well, not the same but the equivalent thing and um, these supports you can also find in the navigator. We have uh, uh, before looked at the line support, the line support are here in types for lines. Here is the line support that is in use in this model. And we also have here types for nodes and we can see how uh, the nodal supports that are in use. And we can also now click from here. We could have gone to them in the model via clicking, but we can also use here the types for nodes. And here we see stiffness via fictitious column. And it's the equivalent thing. Yeah, You can give here now the data about the column, the material, the dimensions, uh, the hinges, and then the equivalent uh, support springs 
are calculated and put in here. Yes, and we can have uh, them active, so we can see it a bit better that we have it considered the stiffness. We can activate here the columns and also for the surfaces. Um, no, not for the surfaces, for the types, for the lines. We have here the walls. And now we can see them. Yeah, so this is how our slab is supported. Mm. Now uh, we can check the loads. So we have supports, we have the geometry, we can check the loads. Uh, we have here self weight and dead load in that model. And yeah, we can look at them if we say show loads. We can see the self weight that is considered, the life load, and we can see that we have load combinations in that model too. Okay, mm, yeah, that's it then. We can start now the analysis. And we do this again here with the table. Um, in this model, I, I wanted to show you that you can go here on concrete design on the settings and I did switch off the serviceability and I also switch off the detailing. So now I do only the ultimate limit state design and I wanted to show these options to you. Here you can uh, set which uh, design um, yeah, options shall be done and we provide also fatigue design, fire resistance design and seismic design. Okay, we keep it like this mm, and we start the design. The mesh is done first and now the load combinations are calculated and when the inner forces uh, are solved then the concrete design is done and it is finished. Okay, again I want to have a look with you at the static analysis and shortly have a look on the displacements as it is a very good option to control the plausibility. Mm, so we are now here in the static analysis and we can see that the displacement look plausible for us. All the supports are considered, um, the loads seem plausible, the, the deformations fit to the loads pl from plausibility here. Then we can go back to the concrete design now. So I want to switch off this for now and go in this view. Now we see it from the top and we again have this overview as a first result and we see again uh, some red um, cases. Now we will go on ratios, design ratios on surfaces. And what we see now is if we look here, we have uh, the safety not fulfilled for the longitudinal reinforcement on the top side, on the top side. So uh, we can also go here. It's the ultimate limit state. And we see now the top side in direction one and here in direction two. And uh, yeah, what we see is we have again at the supports a problem. So that's why it is on the top side. At the supports we have the tension on the top side uh, and here our reinforcement is not enough. At the bottom side we have the maximum values in the fields in the spans and uh, it is uh, uh, yeah, we have the maximum here, but it is fulfilled. We see that there's no higher value than one. So now we have to work on these points and this we can do. We put some additional reinforcement here. Mm. Therefore, I go to the navigator for data and here we have the, um, I want to collapse them. Um, we have also this place where we can give a setting for the concrete design. In the navigator for display, the concrete design is placed here 
and here. Here we were with the global settings and the configurations are placed here. And here we have types for concrete design, some settings that are collected here. For example, concrete durability you can open from here. And here are also our surface reinforcement. And I want now a new surface reinforcement to be defined. And it is of another location type. It's a free rectangular. And it has these uh, diameters. It shall be 16 millimeter. Mm, and with the distance of 15 centimeter. Uh, this is fine. I can see my values here. And uh, now this reinforcement only I do need at the top side. Therefore, I do uncheck the bottom side. And here for this reinforcement type, we have to give the direction and location. I want to use the setting. I want to define the center and the dimensions. And it shall be eight, uh, three meters in A direction and four meters in this direction. And now I select my first center. Uh, therefore, I switch off the results. It's more easy to see. And I use this one. And I say OK. Uh, yes, the results can be deleted. It's clear that uh, concrete design has to be calculated new. So now we can see here our um, additional reinforcement. And I can work with it graphically too. I can select it. And if I press on control, I can see this little plus, and then I can do cre I can create a copy uh, with drag and drop. And I want to do this. Um, I want to have these reinforcements also placed here. Um, and I want another one here. Hmm. I did move the node too, like this. And I want another one here. And I want all these reinforcements to be placed here too. Oh, I didn't copy it. I press Ctrl and Z, then I can undo this. Now I press Ctrl and I can have a copy. It didn't work. Okay. Hmm. I don't know why I am doing it like this now. Um, I can also do a right click, say manipulation and copy, and create a copy, and I define the distance with this setting. Like this, I can copy it too. Okay, now I have additional reinforcement at all the places where I wish it to have to be placed and I can restart the calculation process. Okay, and now I can, um, I don't want to see the reinforcement right now so that I can focus on my graphical results and now, if we go on ratios on surfaces, we can see that this ultimate limit state longitudinal reinforcement checks are fulfilled. And we have the same as options as for the beams, uh, for the members. We have also, we can also check here the required reinforcement. That was the required value. And we can see our provided value. Also, we can see here that we have now additional reinforcements here. It's considered in the provided reinforcement and we can check the not covered. And there we can see that there's no problem with not covered reinforcement at top side and also not at the bottom side, which is fine. What we have here is a, a shear problem, uh, but this can be a, a punching issue. And for these uh, location. It needs to be checked more in detail, but it could be um, required that we do the punching design. But this for today will not be part of the training. Um, this will come in the next step. Okay, um, so that shall be it for today. Um, I want to, maybe I can show you one thing, one more short thing. This is a uh, 
again a result, we can see the longitudinal reinforcement that, meant that is required for that surface. And as we want to print our results also mm, for documentation, we provide here options to modify the display at the mm, bottom part of the navigator for results. And there you can select isoband, ISO lines. Uh, for the surface results, which is quite helpful, and you can uh, additionally activate the values on surfaces. And with these values and with the isolines, it's more easy to print. I wanted to show that. Okay, then we are at the end with the topics I wanted to show within this training. I hope, um, yeah, you got some insight into the options in our program and there's a lot of further options provided you can get to know. Um, yeah, but this is it for now. We will go back to the slide. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, on this slide I prepared some links for you. You will also receive that slide after the training and this is a summary of some introductional um, examples you can find on our website too. And then I would like to recommend this web page to you. Um, we have a carrier page you can find on our website. We offer a lot of different positions in our company. We always search for students who would like to be part of our team um, and we yeah, we offer positions as a student or as a graduated uh, student and yeah you can work in different fields for Google and I would like to recommend to you to have a look at this website yeah okay then that's it for me for today for this training um, I hope you can take something from this training and um, I wish you much joy with our program and also with the next training. See you. Bye-bye.